Hi, Mystery Baker here. If you want to know how I made this sticky, moist, beautiful orange and orange cake, can you see how beautiful that is? It's gluten free, but it's packed with oranges, including all of the zest, all of the juice, all of the pith. Absolutely delicious. If you want to know how I made this decadent cake, then hold tight. Here we go. Hi there, Mystery Baker here. Hope you're all doing well. This is a tutorial on how to make an uh, orange cake that happens to be gluten-free. And when I say happens to be gluten-free, what I'm saying is it's just a great cake that happens to be gluten-free. So whether you're gluten intolerant or not, you should really give this a try. So I'm going to run through the recipe. Obviously, the main ingredient is the oranges. And I've got here two medium-sized oranges. I'm not a food snob, you know, so whatever's in on offer or what's your, ever your favourite, whether it be Clementine, Seville, but you'll need about 250, to, sorry, 350 to 400 grams of orange in weight, okay? And this is where it gets complicated. Well, when I say complicated, it isn't, but this is as complicated as it gets. The night before, a little bit like a Christmas cake, get your oranges, okay, make sure they're washed and cleaned, but put them in a pan and fill the pan with some boiling water and put them on to boiling point. Once they reach boiling point, you place it on simmer and cover with a lid and leave them for one hour, okay? And in an hour's time, so just go off, watch EastEnders, your favorite soaps or whatever's on, and come back after an hour and check the water. It may need topping up, but after an hour, turn them three, you know, 180 degrees <laughs> um, and put them on the other side. So you're basically putting them the other way around and put them back on for a further hour on simmer. Once they've reached that, drain off the water and just leave them to cool overnight. And that is as complicated as this cake gets. It's just a little bit of preparation in advance and it is worth the effort, okay? So for the ing other ingredients you will need, because there's no flour, we're replacing it with ground almonds. So you'll need 250 grams of ground almonds. As I say, all of the ingredients will be listed below. And on top here, you will add a generous heaped teaspoon of baking powder. I do believe that if you're gluten intolerant, you can omit the baking powder, or alternatively, you can buy um, gluten-free baking powder, I think, I think. So that's that. You'll need 225 grams of caster sugar, six eggs, which I've cracked into a jug, and I've beaten them up just to add some extra air okay a little bit of extra air in it and finally you'll need a cake tin this is an eight inch cake tin and i've lined the bottom and around the sides okay because there is a lot of liquid in this cake and it does take a little bit longer than normally so by having it lined it protects the sides and the bottom also you will need hold on there <laughs> About 40 minutes into the baking, once it's in the oven, um, just open the oven and place on to your cake a disc of grease proof paper. It just stops the top from catching because it's usually in the oven for about an hour. It doesn't always catch, but just to be on the safe side. And I've put a little hole in the centre to allow the steam to get out. Um, so I'll add that 40 minutes into the hour baking. But that's it. So once you've prepared and got all of the ingredients weighed out and ready, the cake itself is easy. So I'm going to go and put that kettle on because it's got my name on it for a cuppa. And when I come back, I'll show you how to handle the oranges. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. <laughs> we're back. So I've cut some of the oranges and I've just checked for any pips. Okay, so and they're nice and gooey and soft. Just remove the top because you don't need that i'll put that in the bit just remove that and we'll just start cutting 
So this is a very moist and aromatic cake, flourless cake. And when you've baked it, it's kind of reminiscent of those gooey, zesty drizzle cakes. You know, the ones where you add a zesty syrup to it. The only good part about this is you don't have to add any of the goo because the cake already has that moisture in it and that's what makes it so wonderful. So I'm just checking through with clean hands. And uh, no, there's nothing, nothing there, no pips or anything. So we're ready now. So far right, right set up for the next stage. So you can use a bowl and add all these ingredients, but I'm going to use my trusty liquidizer. So I'm going to just throw all of the orange rind as well. As you can imagine, the smell here is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Love it. So I'm going to get my liquidizer ready and set up and I'll be back in a okay, bit. Okay, so I've got the oranges in the food processor and it's all set up, hopefully, fingers crossed. So I'm just going to give it a bit of a pulp. more a little bit more for look I don't want it to be totally smooth I don't I don't mind it having bits of lumps in and I think that's it yeah yeah that's nice so that's that okay next <laughs> so with your ground almonds and baking powder or gluten-free baking powder I'm just going to give that a mix through and I'm going to pour half in with the eggs so I'm going to add the eggs so I'm going to add half half of my egg like so half of the ground almonds like so and half of the sugar like so. Okay. I'm just going to place that on. Tight. And give it a bit more. Takes a while. I hope you can hear me over all the noise. <laughs> about 10 seconds. Yeah, about 10 seconds. And then remove the lid. It smells so good. So the final half of the sugar, final half of the beaten eggs, and final half of the ground almonds. Smells a bit there, but not a lot. And with my spoon, I'm just gonna try and get that round. And then for the final splurge, you don't have to over mix this in the liquidizer. 10 seconds is good enough. So another one. Ten and counting. And there you have it. Okay. There you have it. And the smell is amazing. Amazing. So remove it. I just switch the electricity off. I don't want any trouble. I don't want any trouble. Move that down, I'm trying to film. I'm getting a bit closer, closer. I don't have any great videoing equipment, I'm sorry. I just use my phone because I'm not a professional. I'm not a professional YouTuber. I just do this as a hobby, as you know. And uh, what you see is what you get. So you bring in your lime tin. I hope that's showing up. And I'm just going to remove the it's very very wet but this is what makes it such a wonderful moist and delicious cake move that over to there and then add it in your mixture into your cake tin how good 
is that. And you know what I'm like? I waste not what not. I get my spoon in and I get it all out. Okay. And I've got my oven on, preheated. All of the oven temperatures for Celsius, Fahrenheit and gas will be listed below. I don't think I can get any more out of that. <laughs> and there's the cake done. And that is going to go into the oven for around an hour. Again, depends how much oranges you actually put in if you went over the 350 grams by just a little. It'll take longer because the cake is more wet. So around about an hour, we know how to check it. Check it with a toothpick or a knife if it comes out clean. Okay, then you know it's it's ready. Um, but it will be more moist than any normal cake. So don't don't worry that it's still got a sticky inside. But it should bounce back. An hour should be good enough, but it might go over five to ten minutes more. At 40 minutes of baking, don't take the cake out of the oven. Just open the oven door and add your disc, okay? And that will just stop the cake from catching on the top and let it bake then for a further 20 minutes. So I'm gonna clear up now, get this in the oven, and when I come back, I will show you what the cake looks like. Back in a bit. Okay, okay, it's ready to come out of the oven. So I'll switch that off. Oh, let's get it out. Let's see. Ooh. Oh, it smells amazing. I'm sorry, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it just smells so good. Okay, so that's the cake done. And it's out. And it's been in for one hour and two minutes exactly. I'm just going to rem remove the top. And as you can see, it's this golden orange, deep orange colour. And it smells absolutely delicious. And what I do now is absolutely nothing. I will leave it now to cool naturally in the tin. That's the best way. And this kind of cake keeps well, okay? It lasts for a while. And what I tend to do is I make it during a day or night that, you know, the house is quiet. And then I can leave it for a few days. And then on a, you know, dreary night when I get home and... I'm tired and weary. <laughs> I can go to the cupboard, take out a piece of this cake with a gorgeous cup of tea and eat it. <laughs> it keeps well. It will last at least a week. At least a week. Um, I hope you like this tutorial. If you have, give me a big thumbs up. Comment below if you have any questions and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Um, I'll also tag in this um you know, how to make a Cadbury's chocolate cake and how to make a Victoria sponge as well if you want to see how I made those. Well, I'm off now. I'm, I'm going to finish off the washing up and I'm going to have a sit down. Thanks for your time. Bye.